Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I'm going to show you uh, what we did about troubleshooting a Wi-Fi issue with a camera. Now this doesn't have to be a camera, but um, it's just a, an interesting little technique I use without any special tools, add-ons, um, and we did not have access to the wireless access points as well. So it might just help you out in the field. Enjoy. So the what's and the why. Uh, the client was complaining that one of his Wi-Fi camera was having issues. The camera would cut out the video recorder on the DVR would have intermittent jitter and frame loss. And you see that obviously in the video, jitter and frame loss look slightly different and it looked like both things were happening. Every once in a while the camera was also not reachable. The DVR would com complain about that. The camera's not reachable. At first the client thought the issue is the DVR and they were, uh, since they were having issues watching recorded videos as well, so they would connect to the DVR, they'd pick a camera, any camera, uh, and as they were playing it, it would also start to kind of freeze up. So they thought it was a DVR. Uh, and then we figured out that the quality of the other cameras, uh, the video quality, was fine. Uh, it was more like it was pausing, like the DVR was kind of processing or something, uh, which was very subtle, but, but we saw that. And then I thought, well, maybe it's just having a problem with one camera. And, and then that's when we looked at the video, found there was one video stream that was not working well at all compared to the rest of them, and that's the one that was timing out and all that kind of nonsense. So then I thought, well, maybe just a poor wireless signal. So it was suggested they set up another access point closer to the camera, but then that required a new cable run. We had to go through walls, floors, you had to get other people involved, all that kind of stuff. And, and that may be a good long-term solution, but in the short term, I just want to see if we can try to address the issue or prove what the problem was before we went into that next step. So the ideal scenario, so if we had access to the access points and if the camera had RSSI and noise measurements, we could figure out what the issue is. Now, you probably know this from consumer grade cameras, they, they don't give you that. And a lot of cameras might give you a little Wi-Fi signal with green, three green bars or four green bars, one green bar, that kind of thing. But we need numbers, right? We need to know negative 60, negative 90. We need to know if the noise is negative 50, negative two, right? That kind of thing. Um, or is, oh yeah, so, or if the client had or if I brought my Wi-Fi tools, we could measure signal strength from the camera and the access point to figure things out. So we didn't have any of this, right? In the ideal scenario, you might have some of this or maybe all of this, good for you. Uh, in the field of network troubleshooting, could have, should have, doesn't really fix the problem. And here's a screenshot of one of my favorite tools, Homedale. It's a portable app for Windows and you can measure signal strength from access points, right? That's just an example of something you might have or you might want to look into. So the methodology, I asked them to remove the camera from the DVR configuration to ensure uh, there isn't a lot of data going to the camera. We also proved that the DVR was working fine. As soon as we took that camera out of the config, then the DVR was fine. So that explained that as well. Since we had no Wi-Fi tools at hand and the wireless network was outsourced, which is very common these days, I used good old ping with the following syntax. So ping, uh, the name of the camera, camera 50, length dash L, that's a lowercase L, 999 and then dash N 300. So the dash L 999 was to put some data in the packet. So the default ping size is 32 bytes. That's way too small. I want to make sure there's something in it to test the pipes. Dash N 33 was 33 pings. The default was four. I wanted more than four. And the results were this. So we sent 33, received 33, lost zero. And it's funny, the DVR actually said that. It said loss was, it didn't have zero. It was like three or five or some low number like that, uh, which we thought was okay, but it didn't really mean too much, right? What we really wanted to look at was this kind of stuff. Minimum 26 milliseconds, which was okay. Maximum 1,816 milliseconds. So that's almost two seconds. And the average was 809 milliseconds. So that is quite the issue. Um, I was quite encouraged that the loss was zero. Uh, so that tells me some other stuff that we can get away with. Maybe it is just signal strength issue rather than it's totally out of range. And then I explained the little rubber duck antennas are typically low gain and an antenna with a higher gain may help. So I unsuccessfully searched the vendor website. I was looking at the camera website. I want to see what the antenna specs were. Sometimes you get lucky and it's there. It's like 0.5 dB or whatever the heck it is. Um, and I said, we don't have that. So let's just go through the computer room. I found some other 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antennas that I took off some older access points, believe it or not. 
and I thought, you know, what the heck, it's got the same connector, let's give it a try. And um, we swapped out the camera antenna, retested, and we want to see if these antenna with higher gains helped. And the only reason why we thought they were a higher gain is they physically looked bigger, right? Which is kind of a good indicator. There's also a whole argument with antennas of directional versus omni. We only had omnis with us. I would have preferred a little directional. They call them patch antennas. Uh, that would have been a far better solution. But again, we're just working with what we have. Uh, another little tip. A lot of equipment don't like the antennas removed when they're powered on. So you probably have to power off the device, change the antenna, power it back on, and retest, right? Just a little note. So the results. So the original is here first line we had antenna 1 and antenna 2 so it looked like antenna 2 performed the best uh, even antenna 1 was pretty good right but 2 was much better uh, so we replaced it with antenna 2 put the camera configuration back on the DVR and the client immediately noticed the difference right they said wow that's quick it's like bang instead of the big pause and the stutter I also show them within the camera configurations that you can try different video stream options to try to improve performance as well so if you're going to send like a 1080p stream, um, that's going to have a different bandwidth requirement than if I just send a VGA stream. Stream, pardon me. Now, this is all based on context. So if the camera's facing a parking lot and it's 10 feet up in the air, uh, you might not need the quality that you need. You know, then if you had a camera inside and you want to see people's faces, or if the camera's mounted lower and you want to read license plates from the vehicles that kind of thing. So this one camera was mounted high and it was just overlooking a general area uh, just to see if somebody was there, right? The, there's no way they're going to get a, any level of detail anyways. So I suggested you might want to use this substream or you may want to configure the mainstream with a lower quality, but the connection works fine now. But these are all things that can try later if they want to try to improve it even further. So don't overlook the antenna. That's it, folks. Have a good day. Bye for now.